Hello everyone, praise be to God, and welcome to the last episode of Kingdom Hearts 1, aka Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix. So, we only have one thing left to do in the game that I actually want to show off, and that is the last bonus boss. And Kingdom Hearts, as a series, tends to have the... basically tends to have a habit of making the bonus bosses, at least one bonus boss in each game, kind of lead into the future games. This boss is what it is for Kingdom Hearts 1, so we're flying back to Hollow Bastion in order to do this. Also, take a look at my gummy ship. <laughs> it's my baby. It's my baby. So this sure looks ominous. And I have absolutely no idea what to expect. I know, like, who the bonus boss is, but I have never fought the bonus boss before. So, I'm hoping I can beat it relatively quickly, but this might be a long video. Which would be kind of bad if that was the case. Anyhow. We're going to the Castle Chapel, and basically what we want to do is go back to the room where we fought Dragon Maleficent, after we seal the keyhole here. So for starters, I'm going to make sure everybody has all the best stuff equipped. I like Sora's equipment, I like Donald's equipment, I like Goofy's equipment, we're not even bringing Beast to the battle. Sorry Beast. We're going through the items, so here's the thing. I've got a bunch of Ethers, but this is the last thing I need to do in the game, so I'm going to stock uh, myself full of Mega Elixirs. Alright, so that's that. Donald and Goofy both can hold a lot of items. For Donald, I'm going to give him... Let's see. God Elixirs, I've got one more Mega Elixir. I think I'm going to give him some Mega Ethers. Because Ethers, I believe, are going to be more important than HP. And Goofy, I'm going to entrust Goofy with my last Mega Elixir. As well as some Mega Ethers. And then a few elixirs. That looks good. Again, don't really know what to expect. Alright, Sora's abilities. These look good. I'm trying to figure out which of these limit moves to equip. I definitely want Ars Ars Arcanum, but do I want Strike Raid? Because that does give me some invincibility frames, which is nice. And I can use that at a distance. I think I'll keep that. Ragnarok, no thank you. Trinity Limit, definitely not. Yep, that looks good for Sora. That looks good for Donald. And for Goofy, I'm, again, not giving him access to Tornado. I might give him... A oh, Evolution takes free MP, and it only gives 30 HP to the whole party. No, thank you. Sorry. That's pretty good. Then for customization, I want Aroga and Kiraga for the defense and quick healing. I'm also going to put Gravaga on there, because that, I feel like, is going to be the magic spell that will deal the most damage to the bonus boss. Donald's attacks. Regular attacks, yep, frequently. Offensive magic, you can use that occasionally. Constant defensive magic will be nice. Advanced magic, that's like stop. I don't want him to really use that. HP items and MP items, use those only in emergency, please, Donald. Alright, Goofy. Regular attacks constantly. Special attacks, well, he doesn't have any of those. Shield attacks, you can defend constantly. Support action, so that's MP uh, gift. Use that. Then only an emergency for your items. That looks very good. Perfect. Now just to save my setup, so that way if I die to the bonus boss, I won't have to go through all of that again. I'm gonna leave and then go back in. Okay, good. Donald didn't fire off a fun again before I can go back in. That's good. Alright. Let's try this. Oh, hey. It's an organization for a team member, is it? Sam?
What's that supposed to mean? Dane. I didn't know I was fighting a Sith Lord here. Oh, that's, that's actually really cool what they did there. Special effects are very nice. Welcome to the last bonus boss of the game. His official name is Unknown, also known as the Enigmatic Man. Oh, he literally is a Sith Lord. He's got lightsabers. <laughs> and he can guard. Lovely. Alright, well he doesn't seem so bad. Just use some Barogas. Or just one Baroga to lower the damage. Oh, wow, this guy's not that bad at all. Oh, what's he doing now? Force Lightning and... Oh, dear. That was tough. So I had to. He blocked my commands and I had to get my way. Back. Not fun. Oh. Thank you, Donald. Okay, I take back what I said about this guy. Our Sarcanum makes quick work. Oh, okay, maybe I'm missing something, but this guy doesn't seem that hard. Alright, he's doing this again. Thank you for second chance and thank you for leading three, sir. That's nice. And well, Combo Master Arsar King is really good. Oh, no, Donald and you are both dead. Mango likes him for that. Okay, so once you get him down to low HP, he's. He gets a lot more dangerous. Oh, hi! Um, <laughs> maybe I should super glide on my way away. And now he's shooting blasters. Yeah, this guy's like someone straight out of Star Wars. This is a character we will see in Kingdom Hearts 2. This is a nice lead in. Oh boy, huh? This I love how it's like, it's, it is an emergency with Goofy. He's like, no, I'm not going to revive Donald. That's okay. Oh, wow, he's like about to die. Let's strike rate him. Okay, um, that guy was nowhere even remotely close to being as hard as people said. Okay, never mind. Unknown, you're a cinch. Once you can get past his command locking move, it's really simple. Wow, yeah, that guy that guy is not even as hard as like Sephiroth. Maybe it's because I'm max level. I did beat Sephiroth on my first try, uh, for this playthrough. Uh -huh. Look out. That guy might be easier than he is in Kingdom Hearts 2. What are you talking about? How cryptic. Ooh, we get the EXP necklace. 
And Ansem's Report 13. That, that reminds me. I don't think I've ever, in all my times playing Kingdom Hearts 1, ever read Ansem's Report. Alright, let's see what the EXP necklace does. Oh, it increases your experience gain by 30%. That That's pretty nice. Maybe I should have gotten that before I reached max level. Oh, well. I guess because that took almost no time. We've got time. Let's read Ansem's report, shall we? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. <laughs> got a bunch of achievements for that. Cool. Ansem's report 1. Much of my life has been dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. That knowledge has guarded this world well. Not a soul doubts that. I am blessed with my people's smiles and respect. But though I am called a sage, there are things I do not understand. I believe darkness sleeps in every heart, no matter how pure. Given the chance the smallest drop can spread and swallow the heart, I have witnessed it many times. Darkness. Darkness of the heart. How is it born? How does it come to affect us so? As ruler of this world, I must find the answers. I must find them before the world is lost to those taken by the darkness. Okay, well, even back in the day, Ansem still loves to talk about darkness. It is my duty to expose what this darkness really is. I shall conduct the following experiments. Extract the darkness from a person's heart. Cultivate darkness in a pure heart. Both suppress and amplify the darkness within. The experiments cause the test subject's heart to collapse, including those of the most stalwart. How fragile our hearts are. My treatment produced no signs of recovery. I combined those who had completely lost their hearts beneath the castle. Some time later, I went below and was greeted by the strangest sight. Creatures that seemed born of darkness. What are they? Are they truly sentient beings? Could they be the shadows of those who lost their hearts in my experiments? Okay, so this is giving us kind of backstory on the heartless. I guess that's cool. The shadows that crawl beneath the castle, are they the people who lost their hearts, or incarnations of darkness? Or something entirely beyond my imagination? All my knowledge has provided no answer. One thing I am sure of is that they are entirely devoid of emotion. Perhaps further study will unlock the mysteries of the heart. Fortunately, there is no shortage of test samples. They are multiplying underground even as I write this report. They still need a name. Those who lack hearts, I will call them the heartless. <sighs> Once you reach Kingdom Hearts 2, you're going to be face palming big time about that. The Heartless appear in groups and are multiplying rapidly. I've provided them both living and non-living samples. They've responded only to the living. They seem to multiply after absorbing something from the living creatures. They, their prey vanishes without a trace. I believe the Heartless are taking hearts. They are born from those who've lost their hearts and thrive on hearts seized from others. The hearts taken by the Heartless become Heartless themselves. Though I lack proof, I am confident in this hypothesis. I must also study their behavioral principles. Though they lack emotions, they do seem to have some intelligence. How to communicate with them? It just occurred to me, could they be the darkness in people's hearts? Uh-huh. I feel like these reports that you get in all these different games are basically like, they're trying to make the big the bad guy a sympathetic character. It's like, but the big bad guy was the one who wrote these, so he could totally just lie and paint himself enough positive light. And he definitely does that. To study heartless behavior, I picked one out for observation. It wiggled its antenna and, as if sensing a target, headed deep into the castle. In the deepest part of the castle, its antenna began vibrating, as if searching for something. Suddenly, a strange door appeared. I'd never known of its existence. It had a large keyhole, but it didn't seem to be locked, so I opened the door. What I saw on the other side mystified me. What was that powerful mass of energy? That night, I observed a great meteor shower in the sky. Could it be related to the door that I have opened? Hmm. A massive core of energy lay beneath the door sought by the Heartless. It may well be the ultimate goal of all Heartless. But what is that energy? I have devised a hypothesis based on, upon my observations of the Heartless. The Heartless feed on others' hearts, and they yearn for that energy core. That thing beyond the door must be a heart too. The heart of this world. There is no proof, but having felt that immense energy, I am certain. That was the heart of the world. The Heartless are trying to take hearts uh, for not only from all living creatures, but from the world itself. But what do they mean to do with the heart of the world? I am now studying material from the meteors that rained down that fateful night. What a find! The material is foreign to our world. It is elastic to the touch, and when two pieces are combined, they bond easily. None of the records I've scoured even mentioned such a substance. What was it, was it introduced to this world when I opened that door? I wonder how many other such materials drift through the atmosphere of this tiny world. I wish I could soar off and find out. Could there be uncharted worlds up there? My curiosity never ceases to grow. But I should stop speaking of such unrealistic dreams. For now, there is no way to venture outside this world. My people and I are all but prisoners of this tiny place. 
There is no doubt that the Heartless are deeply connected to people's hearts. Further study may unravel both their motivations and the mysteries shrouding the heart. As a start, I have built a device that artificially creates Heartless. By recreating the conditions that spawn the Heartless naturally, I should be able to produce them artificially. This device is the culmination of all my research thus far. The machine's test ran successfully, created a Heartless. This may be a step toward creating a heart from nothing. The artificially and naturally created Heartless showed nearly identical traits, but the two types should remain distinct for the purposes of the experiment, so I will mark the ones that are created artificially. I see... Simply astonishing, today I had a guest from another world. He is a cane, and his vessel is built of the material that composed the meteors. He called the pieces gummy blocks. It seems that my opening the door has opened a path to the inner world travel. We talked for countless hours, but one story in particular caught my interest, that of a key called the Keyblade. The Keyblade is said to hold phenomenal power. One lead legend says its wielder saved the world, while another says that he wrought chaos and ruin upon it. I must know what this Keyblade is. A key opens doors. It must be connected to the door that I have opened. Hmm. This is interesting. Just as people have hearts, so do worlds. The same can be said of the stars in the night sky, and deep within each world lies a door to its heart. The heartless desire those hearts. Born out of the darkness in people's hearts, they seek to return to a greater heart. Yes, that's it. The heartless come from people's hearts, as does the darkness. Is the core of the world's heart the world of the heartless? I will pursue the answer there and become all-knowing. My path is set. I shall seek out the wielder of the Keyblade and the princesses. My body is too frail for such a journey, but I must do this. I will cast it off and plunge into the depths of darkness. Bad idea, Anson. Opening a door to the world's heart caused its walls to crumble. These fragments are seen as shooting stars. This explains why these gummy blocks can travel freely to other worlds. I know the catalyst of the collapse. The appearance of the Heartless, however, it will take time to search it will take time to search out the world's doors and to retrieve each heart. Furthermore, the doors can be locked using a keyblade, making the heart forever unattainable. I must take action before the wielder of this key appears in this world. If the princesses and the keyblade are connected, they should resonate. I've chosen a girl. I don't know if she holds the princess's powers, but I will find out. She may lead me to the key bearer. I shall set her free and observe. Oh, that's how Kyrie came to Destiny Islands. She was originally in Hollow Bastion, and then Ansem sent her to Destiny Islands, so she will talk with Sora, who's the Keyblade wielder. Oh, that's actually really cool. The body is gone, the heart should have returned to the Heartless, and yet nothing. This one is unlike any other. Its memories remain, and it has yet to take the form of a Heartless. Close eye must be kept on the situation, much is still unknown. To get to the realm of darkness, one must go through the doors of Kingdom Hearts, the place where the world's hearts connect. Beyond this world is a place in which darkness reigns. Details shall be archived in a separate report. There are many worlds in existence, some of which we know nothing about. The world in which we live, the realm of darkness, the realm of light, and the world in between. Wherein lies true Nirvana? And then, the final report. Where does the body go when it separates from the heart? If the soul remains within the body, is it con still considered to be deceased? When the heart returns to the heartless, the physical form disappears. But that is merely true to this world. Perhaps the body exists in another form in another world. If that is the case, then it is possible for one to exist in two worlds. A being that is neither darkness nor light, belonging nowhere, abandoned by its heart, a mere shell of its former self. Hey, that's what... Uh, enigmatic man said as on his defeat. The relation between the heart and the body is complex. However, I am certain that if your self exists here, then by definition the other cannot truly exist. The other, the one which does not exist, shall be dubbed nobody. Okay, well... That's still a cop-out. That's, that's trying to explain one of the big plot holes I have with the series. It's still a cop-out, though. Like... Yeah. I can't really say much more without spoiling a big part of Kingdom Hearts 2, so I will probably mention it there, but it has to do with the mere shells called Nobody. So yep, that's it for Kingdom Hearts 1. There's nothing else I really care to do in this game, and I was kind of disappointed by that boss. I, I heard on the internet people calling him one of the toughest bonus bosses ever. Maybe it was just because I was max level, but he was not hard.
like at all. Like the, him locking your commands was kind of tough, but totally manageable. And compared to the ones in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix and Birth by Sleep, that guy was a cinch. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please take a look at some of my other Let's Plays. I hope you enjoy them. And I will see you in the future when I do Kingdom Hearts 2, which will probably not be this year. But look forward to that. Until we meet again, have a great day, and may God bless you wherever you are.